Plane Safety Podcast is recorded in front of a live studio donkey. Well, hello everyone, it's Pip here, with a kind of a diary episode, I suppose. I'm here in Brussels, Uh, you probably can't see out the window, but just behind me there is Brussels Airport, uh, looking out over runway 25 right, I think. Uh, It's a Saturday morning, Saturday 24th, so it's pretty quiet actually on a Saturday morning, not an awful lot going on here. Uh, But this is day six of a six day trip for me so I've just got a few hours this morning before I head home later at, on a, a British Airways flight uh, flight at about 1.30 something like that so I had a, a spare few hours this morning so uh, inspiration struck I thought you know what I'll just record a little episode here now if you're listening to the audio uh, podcast then be advised this is also available on video on YouTube I'm recording on video right now. Hello if you're looking at me on the video. Sorry about this but uh, you know we go. I'm stuck with it and it's been a pretty busy six days for me actually. I'm up to in terms of duty hours I think I'm in about by the time I finish today I must be just about at 60 hours duty maybe 58 hours something like that and our maximum duty hours that we can do in any rolling seven day period is 60 duty hours so I'm almost at my limit uh, hence why they've not used me today why I'm not doing any flying I'm just uh, heading home we got in yesterday after a four leg day four flights where did we go I can't even remember where we started or where we went Um, anyway we ended up here in Brussels uh, last night and a, a new crew took the airplane going to St Petersburg I think Uh, You know, I I really wish that I was able to talk to you a little bit more and tell you more about the the flying I do, um, the company itself, and particularly the passengers that I get to meet. Uh, You can imagine in my line of work, I get to meet some pretty interesting people. Um, You know, I've flown and met and chatted with um, royalty, kings and queens, politicians, sports stars, movie stars, uh, all sorts of people, but I just, I'd love to be able to tell you about them, but I just can't, it'll be more than my job's worth. Um, you know, the people flying with us, they value very much their, their privacy, so it would be a massive breach of confidence and breach of the terms of my employment if I was to divulge information and start dropping names, uh, which is a real shame because we get to meet some really fascinating people and yesterday was no exception but I can't tell you about it I'm afraid uh, anyhow we had a, a long day yesterday so I arrived here uh, and I did make a little list this morning of stuff to talk about so let's go back to oh yeah the tomato on the shirt story I'll tell you that one in a second let's go back to day one and I kind of started this whole trip in a bit of a a poor mood I was in a, just a grumpy mood the whole time and I couldn't exactly tell you why, to be honest. There was nothing in particular that had happened to put me in a, a foul mood. But a foul mood, nevertheless, I was in. So day one started off with a flight from London to Tel Aviv, which is a fairly long flight um, in terms of the flying I do. That was a five-hour flight. So we got to Tel Aviv. Oh, this is probably what put me in a bit of a bad mood to begin with. Now, Tel Aviv, as you know, if anyone who reads the newspaper will know, Tel Aviv, it's pretty safe, but it's perhaps not the safest city in the world. You know, they occasionally have stuff, bad stuff happening there. So um, it's one of those cities we have to receive a security briefing for. You know, the hotels have to be vetted by our security department. Um, So, you know, so we know as crew that we're going somewhere safe and secure. And the normal hotel we use in Tel Aviv, it's, I can't remember, it's a Sheraton or a Hilton, one of the big brands, and it's a lovely hotel, great big, tall, high-rise building, 
and if you're lucky you get these really lovely rooms with great big windows like this you know where the whole of one wall is a window and you can look out over the city and I just love that at night keeping the the, uh, the blinds open and having this fantastic panoramic view of the city but uh, we didn't get that hotel this time we got some other hotel I'd never even heard of uh, um, it was like out in a residential area of the city so we get an email from security department saying uh, you know when you finished your trip could you would you mind sending us some, some feedback regarding this hotel and I thought well hang on I thought this hotel I thought these were meant to be vetted already why are we sending you feedback you should already know all about the hotel at the very least I would have hoped you'd visited the hotel and assessed the security arrangements there so I thought that was a bit odd and then when we got to the hotel it was a very nice hotel actually but it was in a residential area and you know I don't know Tel Aviv that well so I don't know if this you know what sort of neighborhood it was in was it a, a safe secure neighborhood was it a uh, slightly less so I didn't know I you know and as a tourist almost you know someone not familiar with the city you really can't just instantly um, get a feel for these things so so that was a bit of unknown but then the other thing I kind of really peed me off a bit was the breakfast arrangements now normally we always have hotels on a bed and breakfast basis okay and that was kind of true for this one, except that the hotel didn't themselves serve breakfast. To get breakfast, you had to go to one of three local cafes, which were like a five or ten minute walk down the road. So this hotel had an arrangement with the cafes to provide breakfast. And I thought, you know what, that's just, that's not appropriate at all. We can't be, you know, especially when we're on minimum rest, we, you know, usually when we're getting breakfast, we're just grabbing something, grab a coffee, grab some whatever, some croissants or something and go. You don't want to be wandering across town first thing in the morning trying to find somewhere to have breakfast. And especially so, you don't want to be wandering around in a strange, less than 100% safe city in uniform with your suitcase and everything in tow. So that was very unusual. I've not come across that before. So I had to feed that back to the guys, to our travel department and security department and say, look, that's, it's a nice hotel and all, it would be great if we were here on holiday, but for cruise overnighting, uh, it's not appropriate at all, I think. So that was that. And then where do we go from there? So Tel Aviv, it was fairly uneventful, it was a long flight, uh, short overnight. We popped out into the, to the local neighborhood, found a little sort of roadside um, or street side cafe. I uh, had a quick bite to eat, it was very nice. And back to the hotel, grab 40 winks and off again. Then the next day it was, got some notes here. Uh, oh yeah, a flight up to Venice in Italy, which is a kind of a longish one again, about three, three hours I suppose it was, uh, to Venice. And then um, I was getting off because the guy I was flying with, I think he was having a line check or something. So I was getting off. Uh, the line training captain was getting on to do the line check. And I had to get an airline to Geneva. So, well, let me tell you about that flight, actually. There was a, just a couple of odd things happened. We were not far out of Tel Aviv, maybe half an hour or so out of Tel Aviv, just heading up across the Mediterranean, up towards just south of Cyprus, I suppose. And all of a sudden, the aircraft starts to do the great big turn to the right. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Where's it going? So I just, I let it kind of for a few seconds, and it turned through about 20 degrees before I, um, you know, changed the mode, just put it into a heading mode and went back in the direction I wanted to go in. And we both looked at it and thought, well, where the heck is it going? And then we noticed that the... Um, the air data computer, the thing that calculates all the winds and the ground speeds and the true air speeds and all the rest of it, it somehow the two of them had got utterly confused because on one side we were showing a wind um, from our sort of left hand side, a headwind of about 30 knots, so you would expect a drift angle off to the left, then the other side was showing a wind from the right of about 120 knots. And I thought, well, that's damn odd. How is it measuring wind on that side and a totally different wind on that side? Well, anyway, the wind on that side had obviously won out because the aircraft suddenly put this big correction in to lay off the drift to the right. So I know we were pressing buttons for a bit and thumping it on the top. It's like, work, damn you, work. And eventually it, uh, 
it sprang back into life. But that was odd, sort of gremlin somewhere in the system. And you know it's not uncommon, occasionally the aeroplanes just do weird things, um, which is exactly why we need pilots in the cockpit to recognise when it does weird things, because otherwise if there was you know, automated cockpits it would just go off and God knows where it would have ended up. Somewhere in Turkey I would imagined. So that was kind of weird, but it happens. So anyway, yeah, so we got to uh, Venice and then I had to catch a flight to Geneva. And it was quite a nice actually, uh, a little Saab 2000, a nice turbo prop. I've been getting a lot of turbo props lately, uh, which is nice. But anyway, there was, I was had a few hours before the flight, before the airline. So I went and installed myself in one of the lounges. You know, I've talked before, I've got this priority pass, uh, lounge access pass thing, so it lets me into all the executive lounges, which is it's great. When you've got a few hours to kill, it's lovely just to be able to go somewhere uh, quiet, somewhere with internet, be able to grab a drink, something to eat perhaps, and just chill out before your flight. So, hey, why's the contrast gone weird on the screen? Sorry about that. So I went up to the lounge, uh, you know, I was in uniform obviously, I'm, I'm midway through the day, so I'm, you know, when you're in uniform, wandering around an airport, you do tend to get glances, you know, people just give you the, the, the once up and down, and, uh, and just, you know, because you just stand out a little bit more. And you know, sometimes it's quite nice, a bit of attention, you know. So there I am, I'm strutting my way through the airport, soaking up the admiring glances uh, as I'm in my uniform. So I go up to the lounge, uh, get a, a water and something to eat. And it's a really nice lounge in Venice, I've not been there before. It's got this, you can go outside and it's got like a terrace area and you can look out over the airport. So uh, I went wandering around the lounge, you know, go to get a drink and, and people are kind of looking at me and I'm thinking, yeah. Okay, I'm looking good today, obviously. My hair's nice, my uniform's nice. Looking good, Pip. This is nice. So there I am, just wandering around, strutting around the lounge, just being a pilot. Hey, you know, look at me, everyone. Pilot coming through, pilot coming through. People looking, thinking, okay, nice. And then eventually I kind of have wandered around enough. I've soaked up enough adoration. So I think, okay, I'll just pop into the bathroom before I head out to the aircraft. And I go into the bathroom and you know, do what I need to do, I'm washing my hands. <laughs> and I look up and blow me, right here on my shoulder is the biggest freaking blob of tomato <laughs> you've ever seen in your life. You know how you get squeeze a tomato sometimes and it all comes flying out. So I had tomato juice and pips, you know, tomato seeds and crap all over my shirt. And I thought, oh no. I, all those people looking at me that, oh, I get it now. That's why they were looking at me. Not because I'm strutting my stuff around the lounge being a hunky pilot. It's because like a blooming idiot, I've got this massive blob of tomato. How embarrassing. So I did my best to kind of wash that off. I don't even know where it came from. I don't think I even had any tomatoes. Strange, but it was huge. Not like a little bit, not like a tiny bit here. Like a huge, flipping three inches diameter blob of tomato on my shoulder. So I washed that off as best as I could and kind of sheepishly, like this, head down, walked back through the, back through the people to get my stuff. Oh well, you think I'd learn after all this is? You know, the only other time I remember when I got. Um, undue levels amounts of attention it was in Dubai this was a few years ago first time I've been to Dubai actually uh, got there kind of late local time uh, so I went for a, it was too early to go to bed so I went for a walk up and down the street and it was still a bit early I wasn't tired so I popped into the hotel bar I thought okay I'll just go and sit down and and read my book or something for a second have a drink so I went into this bar in, in, uh, in the hotel in Dubai and the bar was pretty quiet, but there was a lot of very attractive women. Okay, they're all in their makeup and they're all um, short skirts and stuff. And they're all—I walked in and they're all looking at me and smiling. And I was again, I was thinking, ah, oh, okay, I must be looking good today. And it took like three or four minutes before you know, sat down, soaking up the uh, soaking up the 
all the admiring glances from the women and I suddenly realised, ah, they're working girls, aren't they? <laughs> it's not me they're interested in, it's my wallet. So, uh, anyway, that was the tomato incident. Very embarrassing. You should learn a lesson there. If people are, are looking at you when they usually don't, it's probably because you've got something on your face or on your shirt or something. And of course that was a brand new shirt. Typical. I reckon the average life expectancy of one of my uniform shirts is a couple of months tops. I don't think I can make a shirt last any longer than that. Go within a hundred foot of an aircraft and somehow I managed to get a great big blob of grease or something down my back. I don't know how that works. What else happened? Um, oh yeah, well I was still kind of in a, a bit of a bit of a bad mood, you know, following the hotel in Tel Aviv and now a blob of tomato on my shoulder. And actually the thing that kind of turned my mood around, uh, it's a podcast, I was listening to a podcast. Now, I used to listen to this podcast quite a lot, but for some reason, I just, it just got left behind. I hadn't listened to it for a long, long time. So I downloaded some episodes and it really made me laugh. So I downloaded a whole bunch more and I forgot how good it was. And this podcast is, if you haven't listened to it, is Betty in the Sky with a Suitcase. You have to listen to this podcast. You have to listen to Betty. She's a flight attendant with, a, I don't know, a, a big American airline. I'm guessing American Airlines. I'm not entirely sure. But she produces this monthly podcast and it's just her little stories and tales that she picks up from her travels around the world. And it's just fantastic. It's one of the funniest podcasts out there. And it really lifted my mood. She's just got some fantastically good stories. I was chuckling to myself as I listened to it. So go right now and download Betty in the Sky with a Suitcase. It's a great podcast. You won't regret it at all. Really good. Uh, now, whilst I was in Geneva, I managed to re-upload uh, the last episode of Plane Safety Podcast. The one... I'm sorry, I keep kicking this chair here. I've got this leather chair. If you can hear this funny... Farty noise. It's not me. It's this chair. I should. It's rubbing up against the desk. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the last episode. Ah, now the sound quality was really less than ideal. Um, it was a lot. I I was fiddling. I, this is why. Okay, the sound quality was so poor. I watched this YouTube video about producing good uh, podcasts and good sound files, and the guy in it had suggested um, fiddling with the the equalization, the sound curve, to boost the bass a little bit because apparently people naturally like prefer just a, a slightly bassier tone when they're listening to uh, to people talk it's I don't know why but I can I'm, I'm on board with that so I was trying to to boost just a little bit the bass end of the sound on it but each time I made an adjustment that kind of the sound quality would just sort of disappear a little bit and eventually I got to a point where I'd been adjusting it up and then adjusting it down, then adjusting the other end of the, the spectrum. And it, the whole thing just got to a great big mess and I couldn't get back to where I'd started. So I, I kind of struck a compromise. I, I got something that I thought sounded reasonable. And, it, you know, when I listened to it back in my headphones, it sounded OK. So I went ahead and published that. But I, I published it and literally like five seconds later, I get a, a text from Captain Owl whinging at me saying oh the sound quality is rubbish I said oh bugger okay well do you think I need to republish it and he said oh no it's fine as it is so it's Captain Owl's fault actually in fact I've got something else to blame on Captain Owl in a minute but uh, so I left it be I let it be and then over the days I got quite a number of uh, messages from disgruntled listeners complaining at the sound quality so I thought oh geez do you know I better try and sort this out. So actually, um, it was beyond my technical capability, so I sent it to the superhero, Superman Nev, over at Nev Tech, Nev Bounds, and he was able to twiddle knobs and press buttons and slide thingamajigs on his equaliser and, and all kinds of magic, and, and he sorted it out a little bit for me. It's still not perfect, but it's much, much better than it was. So uh, thanks, Nev, you, Neville for doing that. Uh, so I was able to republish that. So if you've not, you know, if you gave up on the original recording because the sound quality was too poor, 
and then go back and download it again. It's called whatever it was, version 1.2. So sorry about that, everyone. I will do my best. I, I always seem to have problems with the sound quality. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's republished now. So uh, enjoy the last episode. And then uh, from Geneva, do you know, I can't remember where I went from Geneva. I know I spent two nights in Geneva. Uh, we went to some places, then came back. You know, the trouble is that in safe jets, the plans change so much, especially when it's busy, when we're struggling to, or when the flight demand is very high, when we've got a lot of flights going on, uh, the plans can change so much. It's such a fluid environment uh, and things just have to change. You know, we couldn't just stick to an exact schedule because the whole thing would fall apart within seconds. You know, passengers are, are late. Obviously, we've got to wait for our passengers. Um, people cancel flights at the last minute or people book flights at the last minute. Uh, aircraft break down. So you just never know. I mean, we, we kind of see what we, we're going to be doing the next day. We get what we call a tentative briefing, which just gives us an idea. But that will often change. And even during the day, even during the flight, things can change. You know, it's not terribly uncommon for us to be going somewhere you know empty with no passengers in the back and the sat phone will ring and they'll say okay we don't want you in Paris now we need you in in Munich or, or wherever else so I mean it doesn't happen that often but it, it does happen but um, things change all the time and that's it can be quite exciting like that for other people you know some people don't cope too well with a change and it just stresses them out uh, I find, you know, I don't mind. It's no difference to me. But uh, you bet your bottom dollar when you've got a nice plan. You think, oh yeah, we're going here. We'll go to a nice restaurant. I'll call my friends and this, this, and this. If you've got a plan in mind, you know, if you're making plans to do something in the evening, then you can absolutely bet your bottom dollar that you'll end up somewhere entirely different. You'll end up in Moscow or somewhere in the depths of Africa. So yeah, so that this week was kind of like that. There was a lot of plan changes going on. Uh, I know we, in fact, I've got it right here. I could tell you where I went. Give me a second, I'll have a look. I keep a, on my work iPhone, I use the notes application just to keep an, uh, a track of the times and destinations where I've been. So right, so day one we went to Tel Aviv, then I went to Venice, then I went to, yeah, up to Geneva, then we went to to Munich, then to, ah yeah, then we went to Palma Mallorca. And this is the other thing that I've got to blame on Captain Al. So we're in Palma Mallorca, lovely Mallorca, uh, one of the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean. Uh, and I've not been there that much this summer, which is rather unfortunate. Last summer I had just loads of layovers overnight in Ibiza and Mallorca, places like that, wonderful, I just love those overnights, get a nice hotel with a swimming pool, maybe down on the beach, get a nice restaurant, fantastic. This summer, not so much of that. So anyway, we're in Palma, Mallorca, not an overnight, we're just there uh, for a couple of hours, turn around. So I'm sitting in the FBO, uh, just doing whatever I was gonna do, and, uh, and uh, Al calls, Captain Al on FaceTime, so we're chatting just for 10 minutes about this and that. Um, so I finished with the conversation with Al, and then I've got to rush off to the aircraft because it's time to go. And I get in the aircraft, we get it started up, we're taxing out, and I'm looking around. It's like my sunglasses. Where, am I, where are my sunglasses? I know I had them in the office. You know, they're attached to my lanyard, to my security thing. I thought, shoot, I hope I've not left them in the office. They must be here somewhere. Anyway, so we go off and we flew to wherever it was we were flying to. And I'll tell you where it was. Oh, it was back to Geneva. And blow me, I've left my sunglasses in the office, in the FBO office in Mallorca. And that's Captain Al's fault. Had he not called me, my mind would have been on the job and I would have had my sunglasses. I've lost my lovely Serengeti super duper sunglasses and I've only had them a couple of months. Damn you, Captain Al, you owe me a pair of new sunglasses. Actually, it's not as, as bad as all that. I made a couple of phone calls and it turns out there was a flight going to Luton from Palma uh, yesterday. 
So the guys gave my sunglasses to the crew of that aircraft and uh, hopefully they've taken my sunglasses to Luton and I can pick them up later today when I pass through and get my car. So I'm going to let you off this time, Captain Al. Just this once. Don't do it again, though. Yeah, so that was a back to Geneva, a second night in Geneva. Then the next day we went to Milan, we went to Amsterdam. I went to London Stansted. If you follow me on Twitter, you will have seen uh, the picture of the massage chair at uh, the crew room at Stansted Airport. Oh, this thing is fan flipping tabulous. This this great big massage chair. There's not a part of you that it can't get to. You know, you think a massage chair would just kind of poke you in the back of it, but this chair does everything. It does your legs, your feet, your thighs, your back, your head, your everything. It's an extremely intimate and rewarding experience, this massage chair. It's, uh, as I said on Twitter, it's, it's nearly my ideal woman. And it was, it's all dressed in leather as well. It's fantastic. What more could you want? Uh, so I, I spent a very pleasant hour being inappropriately molested and touched by this uh, massage chair in Stansted. So that was good fun. <laughs> and then Stansted, we went to uh, Zurich, spent a night in Zurich. So three nights in Switzerland, this, uh, this tour. Two in Geneva, one in Zurich, which is fine. I love Switzerland, but blimey, it's blooming expensive there. If you want to go and uh, eat out at night, have a just a burger or a pizza or something, it's really, really expensive. I think the, the, the cheapest thing on the menu at the hotel was uh, 30 Swiss francs, which is like, uh, it's almost 30 pounds, I think, plus a couple of drinks. So you, you're easily looking at 30 or 40 pounds bill just for a, a basic meal. Uh, so three of those times three turns out to be a really expensive tour this, uh, this week. But made up for by the fact that getting airborne out of Geneva early morning or Zurich early morning as the sun's coming up over the Alps. It's just wonderful. It's one of my favourite views whilst flying. Especially early morning where you've got the kind of a, a mist, or you know, you get an inversion layer and you get this mist, a light fog, just trapped beneath it down in the valleys and the sun's coming up and it's just kind of shining down in this mist. It's a really lovely view as you get airborne and go over the Alps. You know, the snow is still on the top of the highest mountains. Just gorgeous. So, on one hand, super expensive to eat out there, but on the other hand, you get a nice view. Uh, so that was Zurich. Oh yeah, and then yesterday was um, Zurich to Barcelona, and then Barcelona to here. And we got into uh, Brussels at about, uh, yeah, about 6.30 yesterday evening. So it was another long day. A lot of duty hours, as I said earlier, almost up to my limit. Um, so just uh, just my British Airways flight home today. So I should be back home walking through my front door at about 4.30 this afternoon, which is good just in time to say hi to the family and then say bye to the family because I'll grab my squash kit and go straight off to play squash, my usual Saturday evening squash engagement. Uh, hopefully I can join the um, or watch Plain Talking UK this morning. They're going to be recording pretty soon. I think they've got Steph... And, uh, and Micah as guests on this morning, so that'll be great. Nice bit of eye candy to look at, makes a nice change from staring at Carlos and Matt. Get a chance to stare at Stefan and the gorgeous Micah. So do that, and then on Monday, see my fingers are crossed here folks, on Monday, if the weather's good, like it is now, look at this, clear blue skies out there everyone. If it stays like that, or something similar, then I'm going to be going down to the gliding club on Monday where I've got the whole day booked. I've got a glider to myself, I've got an instructor all to myself. I had to pay a little bit extra for that, but it's the only way I'm going to get this thing done. So I'm going to go down to the gliding club, uh, bash out some flights and hopefully get signed off um, to go solo again. So I just need to do a couple of winch launches, uh, practice some cable breaks on the winch launch uh, do a couple of aero toes probably and then hopefully I'll be set loose on my own so I can go up take a single seat glider perhaps and go up and just enjoy uh, enjoy being alone in an aeroplane again just flying for myself which will be great fun 
I've not done any you know, solo flying for years and years and years. So hopefully that will pan out on Monday. What's that? Looks like a, a Vueling A320, Vueling Airlines. And then what else have I got this week? Yeah, not much. I've got the standard five days off and then I'm back at work, I think, on Friday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Th yeah. Do it all again next Friday, another six day tour. And then the tour after that, I'm in the office actually, flying down to Lisbon. Uh, I'm in the office for two nights for the uh, for the next Safe Jets safety committee meeting. So I do need to do a little bit of preparation work for that uh, within the next week or so. So I guess that's, that's all. Uh, just let me check my little notes here, make sure I I hit everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, crew mills. Why was I going to talk about crew mills? I don't know. I want to put book list. I don't know why I was going to talk about book lists. Um, I'm reading at the moment. Uh, here's a book recommendation for you folks. I'm reading, or rereading, I should say, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Now, I read this, or at least the first of the five books, uh, years ago, and it's uh, if you've not read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or if you've not even heard of it, then you're missing out. Go and look up. You can download on your uh, Kindle or whatever other device, or even you can even now get, I don't know if you've seen these, books in paper format. You can actually hold a book and you can turn the pages. It's amazing. What will they think of next? I use my iPad. I do actually, I read quite a lot actually. I probably... You know, not like Superman reader, but I probably get through a couple of books a month. And I've been reading an awful lot of science fiction lately. I love sci-fi. I try and I, I try and read intelligent books. Not that I really understand them, but um, I've been trying to. I had a a New Year's resolution last year to read some Dickens. Embarrassingly, I've only read a couple of uh, Charles Dickens books. <laughs> I didn't get very far with it. I read like for the fifth time. I read about half of A Tale of Two Cities and then got distracted by some sci-fi so I really need to, to get back to that so I'm reading um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy at the moment but what else have I got on my on my Kindle app here's my Kindle app here look what else have I got look here's one of my favourite books The Martian you've got to read this book people you know if you've seen the film Uh, what else? This was a good book, Ready Player One. Now, that's not the sort of thing I would normally read. It's kind of a a homage to uh, video gamers, you know, the 1980s or the early video games. But actually, it was a really, really enjoyable read. What else have I got on that? You know, some classics there. 2001, Arthur C. Clarke, probably my favourite author. Uh, lots of sci-fi there. This one I just read the other week, End of the World Running Club. That's worth reading. Uh, the 16 Galaxies, that's not worth reading. That was rubbish. I got all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, the Mars Trilogy by Kim Stanley Robinson, that's pretty heavy going. It's worth reading, but it's, uh, it is heavy going. I got a whole bunch of uh, flying related books I've not read yet. The Life of Captain Riley by J.T. O'Neill. Um, something about bush flying here somewhere. Oh, look, QF32. Did I ever talk about this on the podcast? I can't remember. I read that some months ago. That was a pretty interesting book. I'm in two minds about that one. I don't want to say too much. Um, a kind of a strange book in terms of writing style and the narrative. It was a little bit all over the place. But uh, yeah, very interesting read nonetheless. So hey, if you've got any great books that you'd like to recommend to me, then uh, go ahead and do so. I'm always on the lookout for uh, for some good books. I'm forever scrolling through the Amazon Kindle store um, but of course don't judge a book by its cover but it's all you've got to go on on the uh, Amazon store I, I quickly learned to disregard the reviews uh, on Amazon because I think I read reviews that was of this book 16 galaxies all the reviews were great and I read it and it's just atrocious it's absolute crap like written by a five-year-old anyway I don't know what I'm talking about don't know what I'm talking about. I'm rambling now. Why don't I, I close this thing down? Uh, I need to go and have a shower. Uh, 
get ready. In fact, I've probably got time to go to the gym. Maybe I should do that. What do you think? Go to the gym or go for a quick run. Such a nice day out there. Anyway, I'll be back hopefully very soon. The next episode, what I'm thinking of doing as my topic of the week, I'm thinking about talking about propellers, the uh, how propellers work, the aerodynamics of propellers. Uh, and this is inspired by a piece of feedback that I've got, which I'll read on the next episode, which is quite funny um, about propellers. Okay, So that's what I might be doing next time. So stick around for that. Otherwise, I think it's time for me to go. I've bored you enough. Uh, I hope you're not feeling physically sick after looking at me on the on the video for the better part of half an hour or whatever I've been going now. So take care, everyone. See you soon on the next episode. Don't forget, if you want to contact me, uh, feedback at plainsafetypodcast.com or you can find me in the usual channels at uh, um, Facebook and Twitter and all the rest of it. So take care, y'all. See you soon.